Hey guys, I'm international singer-songwriter Hira and I'm on Live With Me. See you guys soon! Well, it looks like we're having some little technical difficulties here at this time of the <laughs> evening. Welcome to Live With Neve. Welcome ah. to Live With Neve. Welcome to our wonderland of madness and sin and fun and all kinds of crazy shit. Here we are live with Neve. We got a great guest coming up. It is 7.30 here in the Big Apple and it's a beautiful 7.30. All the rain and winds. Although I'm looking over, it looks like the city's still pretty glum, but I got uh, clear and nice skies here in Asbury. Um, today, for everybody watching, we've got a great guest, uh, one of my favorite drummers, and I, I told him when I, we were speaking a week or two ago, uh, I remember when 52nd Street came out, and I was about 16, 15, 16 years old, and I got that home, and I stole every lick he played, Liberty. <laughs> I, I ripped them off, I played them, I sat in my garage, and I played them for hours with my record player, and I just lived that, that summer of graduation, I... It's like the soundtrack to my life kind of thing. And, you know, um, <laughs> you know I, got, I, got to, I got to tell you that I, on still, um, it's still rock and roll to me. I do that. Uh, it's in a shuffle, and then I go into that straight for fill when right. it breaks down. And I uh, actually cut that from uh, uh, Instant Karma. Alan White does it on Instant Karma. He, he, right. It's in a shuffle, and he breaks into that, that thing. Uh, so I told Alan, I saw him at the NAMM show, and I said, you know, I got that little fill. I, I, I took it from you. And he, all he did was stuck his hand out like he wanted money. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. Uh, you know, I got some, my, my attorney will call you next week. We'll get the royalties sorted <laughs> right, out, right? right? Just well, a few I, points. I, you know, you know I've, I've always believed that, that uh, 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 good drummers will borrow, but great drummers will steal, you know? Absolutely. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. It, you're, you're right. It's same thing with like John Bonham and thing, you know, drummers like that. Um, yeah. You know, to, well, you know, just start out. I'm, I'm going to take this from sort of your beginning um, and ask some questions. Who knows? Maybe I'll even hit one you've never been asked. Okay. I mean, who knows? We'll give it a shot. Yeah. Um, there you go. Let's back up to is your real name Liberty or was that a nickname? Well, you know, it's really funny. Um, I have a book out now. That it's, okay. It, it looks like this. Oh man, uh, I gotta get it. I was showing Jules, and uh, like it starts out uh, with my family. It starts my family history, and it says mm -hmm. my real name is Libertori. L -I oh, okay. L I B E R A T O R I. Ah, uh, my paisano. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, man. I may have a Dutch last name, but my family's all Italian. We had a very nice restaurant in North Jersey for the past fifty years. They sold it maybe thirty years ago, but. Um, that we were, you know, all through the sixties up until about 1980, we right. were there and, cool. uh, the it was great. Fun. We're Northern Italian cuisine. I'm okay. from up in, uh, you know, Milan area. Yeah. As they say yeah. we're like the New Yorkers of Italy. <laughs> <laughs> they always want to talk about how to dress and how to talk and how to spend their money. And everybody <laughs> down South says, oh, piss on them, bunch of snotty New Yorkers. <laughs> I think it's funny, you know, in, in America, like when I moved to Florida, there's not this huge gathering of uh, Italians like there is in New York and New Jersey. And when I first moved there, I, I remember hearing somebody's mom say, well, he's a nice boy, but he's a Catholic. <laughs> I was like, yeah, right. Like, what the fuck? Everybody's Catholic, aren't they? Or Jewish. <laughs> hey, when I when we were touring with Billy in the 70s, right? I mean, the first the Turnstiles tour was uh, 75, 76. I was down south on an airplane, sat next to this girl. She must have come from Alabama or Mississippi like that. And she, I was talking to her, and, uh, you know, I turned out I was from New York and everything like that. And then uh, she said, what, like, what are you? And I said, I'm Italian. And she went, oh, I know an Italian. Like, one? You know one yeah, Italian? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I remember thinking to myself, well, isn't everybody? <laughs> but, you know, it's I a, a, New York, uh, a little bit of conceit from growing up here. Right. It is. Right. And I, I tell you, we still make fucking better pizza than they'll ever make in Florida anywhere. No oh. offense to my friends who own them. You know, I lived in Florida for nine years. I lived, right. in, a, I yeah. lived in a place called Winter Park. Oh, I, oh sorry, yeah. I not, not too far from I here. I know very well. I'm a full sale alumni. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you know Winter from, Park. I lived in the where, um, you know, Park Avenue and, and um, New York Avenue are. That, that, yeah. that little downtown section with the golf course. Right, I lived around right. there. And, oh, very uh, cool. You know, 
living in Brooklyn, I always tell people that, that say, do you miss Florida? And I say, I don't miss Florida. It's really hot in the summertime. And yeah. I can fall out of bed here in Brooklyn and hit like five great restaurants without even leaving my house, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been gaining a few pounds during this. Now they're starting to shed, but <laughs> I like to eat, you know. Yeah, well, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's a, a you know, uh, you get that uh, comfort food, you know. And I, the problem yes. with us Italians is like lasagna is comfort food. Like some people yes. eat meatloaf or something like that, you know. Right, yeah. right. Lasagna is a ta- uh, comfort food, you know, a nice big yeah. meatball hero. Yeah, it's like our yeah, grandma my dad, says, yeah. oh, it's Thanksgiving. I make a lasagna. You want a turkey? I make a lasagna. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's everything. Family, everything. It was. Joe, yeah, it was like yeah, Joe, yeah, yeah, yeah they, Oh yeah. no, they had yeah, they had. I mean, our my my family was you know uh, a big pot of sauce was a side dish, right? right. You yeah. know, pasta right. pasta is a side dish, and then you have brujol, and you have chicken, and then you have this, mm. and you have that. And that's right. a Sunday, and that's your normal Sunday dinner, right? With like twelve different dishes, and if you don't have at least two helpings, you're sick and dying, and you need to go to the hospital or something's yeah. wrong, or you don't like it, yeah. right? It was. It's always like, what, you want some more? No, I don't. I'm full. I, no, what's the matter? You're sick. I, you're I'm full. Oh, you're so thin, <laughs> libertarian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm gonna have a heart attack if I eat anymore. Seriously, oh, and there's right. still dessert, and you have lemon meringue pie coming. <laughs> right, I mean, forget forget about that's just Sunday dinner. Forget about Christmas Eve. Forget yeah. it. Yeah, man, because that is fish. the best. My, my Christmas Eve fest with my mom. I, you know, I can't wait. In fact, it's funny. Mom's coming up in May, and we're having Christmas uh, here at my house in May to have it with mom. Oh, fantastic! And the question our fans are asking is: Is it really Christmas at Neil's house? What happened? You turned your computer, and I can't. Wait, hear you. Wait, we can't. We can't hear you, Neil. Oh, yes, we can see your Christmas tree. Yeah, that, that was the Christmas tree, which I make a joke because it's still up and every month goes by and I'm like, fuck it. I kind of like it at night. It drives up the place. Well, you know, if you, you know, you're, you're having a smoke or something, it's nice to look at something that's <laughs> twinkly. Absolutely. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so um, what have you been up to these days? Like lately, what do you, what do you, what does a typical day in Liberty's life look like these days? Well, a typical day in Liberty's life is, uh, you know, uh, when I traveled with Billy, it was always like Liberty DeVito, the drummer of the big, biggest single artist in the world, you know, it was great. And then mm-hmm. I come home, it's Lib, take out the garbage. Lib, you know, <laughs> right. And I have a four year old daughter. That I, I, you know, my wife is working from home now. So when she's working, I'm with the baby. You know, right. I don't call her a baby anymore. She's four years old. She gets pissed off. She punches me. But, uh, right. so, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm with her like all day, you know, right. up until the bath. And then, and then it's time to go to bed. And my wife takes over and she goes in there with her. And, but um, yeah, I'm having a, a, a great time. And I'm seeing how much I missed with my other three girls. My other sure. three, three girls are 40, 36, and 32. As a matter of fact, my 32-year-old right. just had a baby, and so it's my first time being a granddad. So I'm All really right. excited wow. about it. You, know? you got a lot. Congratulations. Yeah. Congrats. Congrats. Thank you. And um, so it's just like uh, it's been a lot of fun. The pandemic is kind of wearing me down. Uh, sure. I, I never felt my age before this, you know, and, and uh, uh, yeah. I have flashes of like, this is this is hurting me, you know. This, this pandemic yeah. is hurting me, you know. Right. I, I I try to say words sometimes, and it just won't come out. I can't think of mm-hmm. what my, uh, you know, conscious thoughts, and mm-hmm. I feel mm-hmm. like like it's me. I'm getting old until I hear a teenager do the same thing <laughs> because of the yeah, pandemic. Yeah, it's not that you, you know. Mm-hmm. It's not that yeah. you're getting old. It's this whole. The, the situation, the way we're living yeah. these days, is kind of like... It, it, yeah, it's just the most uncertain and crazy things we've ever seen, I think, in our life. I mean, I'm 60 this year, and I've seen... That's been the weirdest shit I've ever seen, but, yeah. you know, if we read history, <clears throat> shit just keeps going down the line. You know, Rome, it's like 3,000 years old this month, or this year, or approaching 3,000. Right. And, you know, if you read about the history of Rome, it's all the same shit. Just slops yeah. down yeah. through the ages. You yeah. still got a bunch yeah. of slime at the top trying to take it from the little guys. And it's never going to change that. I mean, 
Never going to change. Never. There's always going to be poor and rich and people are going to be pissed off. Some in the middle are going to be thinking they're getting a raw deal. But, you know, life's what you make it. And you have to just kind of try to keep your sanity like in this time of COVID. You know, be nice to people is all I can tell anybody else. And, and you know, me and Jules were talking before you went on the air. And uh, we were talking yeah. about how we have music. That's what we yes. have, that music. Mm-hmm. And, and, mm-hmm. and it could take us somewhere. It, it, sure. We can travel with listening to music, you know, we, we, right. we you feel down. Yeah, you know, I write in my book that, uh, you know, at the end of my book, I write about how life has changed and how I've gone through stuff. And, uh, you know, I'm happy now because, you know, I have this young daughter and my kids are having children now and it, it's really great. But sometimes, you know, I get down. And when I, sure. when I start to get down and, and I'm not walking on the sunny side of the street, all I have to think of is those first four, the first count off. And I, I saw her standing there that Paul McCartney does. When you hear that, one, two, three, four, that's all I have yeah. to hear. And I am right. Oh, good for you. World again, I, I, you know oh, what? It's good. cool you say that because when you did it, I, I was just about ready to go, bam, and that, you know, just what, Ringo time, man. Right. Get the groove going. It's like, Okay, what do you got there, Julie? Is that some yeah, kind of... Uh, yeah, what the hell is that? Not <laughs> it's not like what you think it scary... is. It's a microphone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. I thought you were showing okay. off your party favors or something. I don't know what was going on. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I, I, I am making sure I am having just as much fun as everybody else. I, 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 I was going to lock the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, what kind of show is this, people? What are you running here anyway? Wow. wow. <laughs> so this is right, 18 Julie, and it's over. Okay. Time to start the crazy show now. With, this was just foreplay. <laughs> we want to be live <laughs> here on at night. We're gonna go from like Neil Neve mode to Howard Stern mode. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Have you ever this been is on way Howard's show? Too um, I have not, but I have a friend who has been. I've never How been about you, to- Liberty? No, I've never been to Howard. Nope. I, I'm always, I often wonder what, like when you go on, I wonder how much of this they talk about in the green room beforehand. I know if I went on any radio show and they started asking about my, my girlfriend's carnal desires or lack thereof or anything in between, I'd kind of be like, I thought we were here to talk about the record, <laughs> you know? Right, right. I, I think they, they I, well, you know what you're getting into when you go on Howard. And yeah. I think they, they do, uh, uh, go over things with you, like what don't you want to talk about, or what you know. And I'm the sure last time happened. I did that with a radio host, I had told him before the interview, do not talk about a gig. It was at a nudist colony, and I knew that my guitar player's <laughs> wife was going to be really pissed off. So during the interview, <laughs> I told the host, I said, "You remember this, Julie? I was on Lasseter that time." And he goes, so, uh, Neil, the, the number one thing I told him not to bring up, the first thing he does, he goes, so, Neil, I understand you're bringing the boys up to nude stock. Dude, <laughs> and, and I kept trying to up. tell you, don't say <laughs> shit. It, it, it was hysterical. My, my guitar player said his wife calls in. And uh, he picks it. up and realizes his wife. He goes, and all he says is, "Ask Neil," and he hangs up. <laughs> Phone <laughs> yeah. rings again. Of course, Lassiter pipes me right over, and Lee's over there in the corner, going, "You fucker! What did you do?" And I, and I sort of went, "I don't know what." You know, it, it was very. Yeah, that's why I said, "Don't ever give them any ammo." I'm telling no. you from yeah, experience, don't give them no. ammo. I mean, that's. You know, it's funny. You, you, you mentioned nudist colony. The first thing, I don't know if you ever saw a shot in the dark with Peter Sellers. When, no, he's when not. He, he goes in a nudist no. colony because he's a detective. He's trying to find this. Oh, uh, right. He's Clouseau. And, exactly. Yeah. And he's wearing his, a guitar in front of him. <laughs> he's walking around looking for this woman. <laughs> he sees the woman and the guitar just goes up like that, you know. <laughs> uh, you know, I love Peter Sellers. Those movies are so underrated. People just don't realize if they go back yeah. and watch one. Oh my god, that's funny awesome. ass movies. Yeah, it's I don't know, so man. I've never played a uh, nudist colony. I've never been to one either. <laughs> you don't know what you're missing. Oh my god, oh, yeah. you don't know what you're missing. <laughs> but it's kind of like really great. You can't even imagine, right? They're not really good-looking people at nudist colonies, yeah. right? They're, 
No. It, that doesn't even matter what it's the behavior that blows your mind. It's, it's so you don't even you don't even notice what they look like anymore. It's just you're so uh, it's so ludicrous and 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 beyond what you could even imagine that you're just like like deer in the headlights the entire time. Sometimes I'm just like, man, I don't know if I'd have shared that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's one yeah. thing. It's one thing for people to think you're a fool, but it's another thing for you to just come right out and confirm it on the hello. You wow! Know? And it happens. Oh yeah. So, Good thing so there I weren't cell phones. You, um, like then. Go ahead, Julie. Oh no, nothing. I'm done. Oh, oh, she's done. She's done. Wow, the, the hush. The crowd is murmuring. I'm looking here. We've got gravy, not sauce. You know, I'm amazed. No, uh, sauce. Su Sorry, Susan. It's sauce. sauce. It's, yeah, always sauce. sauce. Susan, it's always sauce. It's always sauce. Gravy. It's you put sauce. gravy on turkey and roast beef. Thank you. Yeah, my Thank family you didn't sauce. do the gravy thing, but we did make this, no. the Sunday sauce, which was different yeah. than the rest of the time. You know, the brujol, yeah. the beef, the, the brujol, the whole yeah. Meal. My, my my family's table looked like Satrioli's yard sale, man. I mean, I yeah. had it all. Yeah, yeah. Kind of good stuff. Everything. Yeah, my mom so, used to yeah. the sauce with, with pig's feet and pig's knuckles and stuff. Oh, all right. See, there lasagna. you go. Yeah. 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 I love it, man. Well, uh, so tell me, what do you do these days? You, um, How are things in New York as far as the session's gone? We're, we're going to take a break in about two minutes. But what's, okay. What's, what's going on? Are you starting to get calls and picking up or – yeah, How is I, I get a lot of calls. I turn things down when I don't know who they are, you know, and say that uh, after COVID, then call me. But I, uh, right. Richie Canada, uh, uh, the sax player that played with Billy and played on all those great songs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I met him once. He's nice. Right. Yeah. He has a studio, Cove City, out on Long Island. And we've been doing a lot of things out there. Cool. I, did the, I did my audio book out there. We've been doing a lot of guys have been coming through with original material, you know, and uh, so we stand busy out there. That's been a lot of how, fun. How long, how long ago did you get the book released? It came out last July. Okay. It came out, it came out in July, and the <laughs> audio book just came out last week. So where can well, everyone cool. get your stuff? On uh, Amazon uh, cool. or okay, Hud HudsonMusic.com. HudsonMusic.com. Okay, cool. Yeah, and HudsonMusic.com, people. And the audio book is on Audible. Okay, cool. Audible. Well, you've heard it. Audible. Liberty DeVito. We're going to take a short break. We're going to be right back. We're just having fun tonight. We're talking, chilling. Uh, I don't have any wine because I don't drink anymore, but what the hell? I'm still having a great time. And uh, it's, I appreciate you coming on, man. <laughs> we were talking a little bit about the thoroughbred days, and those were some fun times uh, in my life. And, yeah. uh, you know, I still have all my family in Tampa and St. Pete and all my musician friends down yeah. there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, who knows? I'm, I just love it up here too much to make the plunge. I, I don't like living in Florida. I love my family and my friends. And in the winter, it's cool. But it's like you say, you know, you're in, you're in New York. It's, it's when I moved here 12 years ago, I got a job offer like two months after I got here. And I would relocated from Florida, put my drums, my books, my guitars, and hauled ass up here, got a day job working for Muzak, which I had done in Florida. Right. And um, I came up here and I'm still here and I love it. There's just the, a week after, no, two months after I got here, I get a call from Tampa. They wanted to offer me a gig running the electronics at Tampa Stadium for the Buck games. And it was really, really good money. I, I mean, I just moved here and I just started getting used to the sun coming up. Right. Like the sun going down and I'm looking at the city. Here, you look at the city from Jersey. In the morning, the sun comes over the city. In Tampa, the sun sets over the city. So it's a weird – I just love it. I'm right here in Highlands. You know where that is by Sandy Hook? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm right here on the mountain under the lighthouse. And uh, oh, cool. nice place, great little town, um, you know, short ride to Asbury uh, Park down the road. Yeah. And uh, it's a great little funky musical town. There's a lot of artists and crap around here. And I can be on the boat and into the city in 45 minutes. So it's cool. like, you know – where where's you julie where are you i'm in tampa oh you're in tampa okay yeah mm -hmm. yeah 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 it's been raining the last few days today was pretty pretty nice so it wasn't too bad now when i lived in florida i would make the drive to tampa just to go to the columbia restaurant oh yes. man we, my, we my grandfather used Richard to work on, there Richard Gonsmart, what a gentleman and what a, mm -hmm. it's the first thing i do and lately i've been just every time i end up in tampa i end up going to one or two of his newest restaurants because i want to hit them all yeah. they're all great he's a great guy for anybody who's watching 
Columbia restaurant is an experience to be old. Mm. And, uh, yes, especially with we, the we flamenco the dancers. Show, uh, a few a few months ago to talk about his, uh, you know, his history. And he's just such an exemplary guy. The guy who runs it, you know, they say a fish rots from the head down. He's just such a great guy to work for. And, and you know, if the rest of the world treated their employees like R Richard does, uh, the world would be a far happier place. But, um, yeah, the Columbia's killer. And, you know, hell, man, now I know you're in Brooklyn. Who knows? Sometime we'll have to go out and hang, have some pizza or something in Brooklyn. Let's do it. Let's go. Yeah, it. man, have the best slice of the day. In fact, I would have come in and done the interview. We could have done it somewhere nice, but you know how it goes. It's the first time. For everybody watching, before we go to the break, I'm going to mention when I, when I first reached out to Liberty, I sent him a note. <laughs> and then I followed it up with a phone call on the, uh, the little, uh, whatever this thing is, you know, on, on, on FaceTime. The computer? <laughs> yeah, the computer. <laughs> yeah, oh, sorry, computer. I'm kind of having right. one of those senior moments now here. Now I know why you're here, Julie. Thanks. Oh, yes. <laughs> Somebody's got to keep me online. Believe me, I, I'm kind of wandering off into different territory. Yeah, it's <laughs> 747. Do you want to do a break? <laughs> I guess we better do a break and then we'll be back. More with Liz. I'm Neil from Live With Me. We have an exciting connection for our veterans, country music fans, and there is something for everyone. Gone Country Hats at GoneCountryHats.com. That's right. We've partnered with Gone Country Hats at GoneCountryHats.com. See you soon. Hi, this is Leland Sklar, and I am hanging with Neve, and I am having the best time of my life. Live with Neve, Fridays on the East Coast from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. All right, we're back. We're live. It's nighttime almost, and here we are. We're talking to Liberty DeVito about all kinds of cool stuff, especially food, though. What is it with us Italians? Every time we get together, got to break out the wine, got to have all, some fun. It's all about food, man. Now, I don't, I don't drink anymore like you. I, I've been I don't like either. 15 years now. And, uh, Yay, congratulations. Oh, really? Yeah, congratulations. Really? Yeah. And um, I, I just have to ask you, did you uh, just get tired of it, or did you have a problem and finally yeah. decide just? Oh, I had a problem. I had a problem. Uh, yeah, I, I when I started to puke on my shoes all the time, uh, you know, that was a problem. I don't know no, why I, people get so upset when you do that. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it splashes onto them sometimes. It's, I know. Just get pissed off. But, I always um, go for the potted plant, but <laughs> but you know, I used to I used to actually puke into a bag when I was married to my first wife. I married a drinking partner. That's what I actually did. I didn't, right. I didn't want to be alone when everybody left the party at my house. So I married this woman. We were drinking partners, and I used to wake up in the middle of the night, puke into a, a, a plastic bag, and throw it out the back window to try to get it in the garbage pails and always miss, you know. Oh! Just disgusting stuff like that. Yeah! <laughs> so, yeah, I would say I had a problem. But, uh, you know, it was, it was love uh, for the woman that I'm married to now that actually got me, like, she gave me the ultimatum. She said, look, she's, she's uh, I was 52 when I met her. She was 27. And uh, she, we, we, when you see, when we would be in the dark, or, or if we talked in the dark, you would never know there was an age difference, you know. Uh, so uh, she told me after a little while, she says, look, you, you got a choice. So you either, we could stay together or uh, and you stop drinking or you can continue drinking and just leave. And, and I said, when do you want me to stop? And she said, how about right now? And I said, okay. Oh, good for you. Good for okay. you, man. That's, really, and, uh, that's amazing. I must, I must say, it did take a life. I have a life coach. A life coach that that uh, you know she's kept me off the ledge a few times, but uh, 
you know, right. she's really helped. I don't go to AA, but mm-hmm. I have the life coach that I, I talk to. Good for you. Right. Yeah, I, I don't do AA either. I have. Um, I found it at times just counterproductive to sobriety for me. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of times you go in there and there's so many repeat people. And, you know, I'm not one for going and sitting in the room and commiserating with everybody about what's gone on and gone wrong. Right. Uh, right. You know, I'd rather talk to a friend or a rabbi or somebody, you know, a priest, anybody, just even a friend can be a mental health. health exactly. Person. exactly. And I know myself, um, since I stopped drinking, everything is better in my life. Everything in all yeah. in all areas. Um, yeah. You know, it was a hell of a way. I, I had to uh, suffer some fairly serious injuries two years ago. And, um, you know, I've been sober ever since. I was in the hospital for nine months. And, wow. Uh, what did you do? Well, I fell down the stairs in my house, and I did great on the, on the gainer and the half twist and the worm, but the landing just fucking sucked, man. So I hit the floor, and my girlfriend found me in a pool of my own blood and was trying to open the door and was like, um, honey? And I ended up in the hospital with a lot of uh, miscellaneous breaks, bumps, tissue, just a hot mess. And my liver was about to destroy itself. Right. So um, all I can tell you is a, it was a long eight months of rehab and getting physically rehabilitated with my various injuries. Right. And uh, I just had enough. Um, I, you know, I didn't want to lose my girlfriend. Very similar thing. I didn't want yeah. to lose guys in my band. I'd pretty much, you know, already got those guys where they loved me but hated me at the same time. Exactly. And, exactly. and you know, and I cut out all the people in life who aren't, who are like, that's their whole life. Like you said, you marry a drinking partner. Yeah. Uh, I did that with my second. And, you know, I, I was 40, married a 23-year-old. Yeah. My kids yeah. were like 20 at that time. And, and it was just right. the dumbest yeah. thing one can do. And, you know. I just like a lot of people, A, we're in the industry. B, I just a fun guy. I love to party and make all my friends happy and show up with the party favors and you know. Exactly. But, but you kind of gotta get out of that, I think, as we get older. I know I had to. It was either quit or die. And that's uh, ex- that's exactly what it is. Quit or die. And and, and, and for my like. friends who are trying to get cleaned up, you know, don't think that AA is the only way to do it. I, I'm yeah. not going to knock the organization, a very fine group of people, and they try like hell. Oh, For yeah. me, I just yeah. found it, it wasn't my thing, but I know that a lot of good people have gone through there and gotten saved. So whatever works for you works, but remember people, it's all, no matter what you do or don't do, it's really just about one day, like you said, I made that commitment like you did to your, your, your wife. I just said, honey, I'm sorry, and I'll, I'm done. And, uh, yeah, it, it's like, it. that was it. And I haven't had a drink since. And then, um, and we tell, oh God, we're getting old. I have lumbago. <laughs> what is she doing over there with this? What is that? One of those, uh, what do you call that? Oh, it's a vape pen. A vape. A vape. You're vaping. She's vaping. Two things that yeah. are legal and are healthy for you. And they won't necessarily kill you or anything. There's this great stuff called Kratom, so no opiates, and this great stuff called cannabis and CBD. Well, listen to me. You want to talk about opiates. Uh, Last uh, July, no, a a year ago July, uh, so almost two years now, I had a total knee replacement in my right knee. Ouch. Holy crap. I can't even imagine. Did that hurt? They told me, they said, we're going to give you opiates and Ugh. you have to take the opiates or you will not get through physical Ugh. therapy. Holy shit. What did I you kept, do? I kept thinking to myself, I'm going to get hooked. I'm going to get hooked. Oh, on poor because, you. You know, you wake up in the middle of the night and you're ro- I'm rolling around on the bed and you're going crazy. It's like, I yeah. don't want to take it, but they're sitting right next to the bed. I'll, I'm taking it. I can't stand the pain. Yeah. You know? Amen. We've all been there. Being terrible. drunk and and uh, you know, I uh, five weeks ago I didn't fall down my stairs and I wasn't drunk. I tripped over a box in my living room. <laughs> so I have my shoulder. I, I had my humerus break in five places. So since then, I have twelve pins and titanium and all this shit in my right arm, and it's it's not ready for prime time drumming wise. I can. I can't do 
you know, I'm I'm ambidextrous, so I can play either way. Okay. You know how it is, man. You're playing and you hit yourself in the right hand or left wrist with a oh. QB. You better learn to be ambidextrous for the next 12 measures or whatever you're on. I mean, you know, it's never easy, but uh, what we were talking about drinking, a friend of mine had the call to ask me if I was <laughs> fucked up when I fell in the kitchen. And I was just like, I knew it was coming, and, right. and I get it. You know, everybody, of course, they've heard plenty of drunks say, "Oh, I'm going to quit," and then be like raving asshole two weeks later. <laughs> but I, I really it rubbed my ass. I have to say, I, I was like, "No, I wasn't buzzed. I'm the designated driver, you bitches." <laughs> there you go. There you and go. I have to say, fun. I believed you from the met from the moment, and then you, when you actually said to me, "I promise you, I wasn't drunk," I'm like, I didn't think. Wait, no, I didn't think you were. Well, and somebody it, it, else brought it up. It kind of got in my head then. I was like, like yeah, <laughs> you know, a little pissy about it, you know? But no, I can again, tell that you did, yeah. I, hey, you know what? Lots of people have a problem with drinking. It's they the don't. most oh, abused thing in America. People get drunk and binge drink, do all kinds of stuff. And if you, when you get sober, I don't know about you, but for me, it's really weird noticing a sheer amount of advertising aimed at liquor. Unbelievable. It, it's unbelievable. It, it, the amount of money spent, and, uh, you know, I don't know, sometimes you, you kind of feel like you show up at a party if you're sober and people find out about that and they get weird with you because you can kind of remind them of their own alcoholism sometimes. And right. It, you know what I mean? Like they already know they got a problem and they've probably tried to quit and it's hard. And, and, and you know, people don't want to admit they got a problem. And, you know, I didn't. I, I've had, you know had a long life of uh, having one hell of a party that, you know, I, 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 I can remember a time when I, I used to, uh, you know, I was playing with this singer. I won't mention his name. And right. uh, every time I walked into the bar, you know, this is the third time I've been sober. This time it's been 15 years, but it's the third time I tried to stop. Great but, job. So this, this time I'm there. But I used to walk into the bar just to have a soda or something and hang out with the band. And he used mm -hmm. to look at me, the singer used to look at me and goes, I feel like my mother's in the room every time you walk in. Like, <laughs> talk about a, being guilty for what you're doing. Oh, oh because man. Because I'm not drinking. You feel like your mother is in the room, like watching That's you. Nice. I'm not watching you. Nobody I gives a crap. problem. Yeah, yeah I, I don't care what people do. And I, I love all my friends. You know, they yeah. can drink. It's not, <clears throat> it's the biggest problem most people have with alcohol is they can't accept the fact that they've screwed up and they got to get off it no matter what they do. I don't right. care how you do it. You can be crazy about fitness. You can be crazy about practicing. Whatever thing that you are into, if you can get, do more of it, it'll make right. you do more yeah. of what makes you happy and is positive. Right. I mean, my life's improved so much by just, um, I have so many friends now. I didn't ever have any sober friends before, or not very often. I'll put it that way. Sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I know, Jules. Yeah. It's yeah. time. Yeah. Um, yeah. You fall down. You take a Jules, you drink, right? You drink? No, no, not anymore. No, no. no. Oh, oh, I did okay. it. I did it at one time, yes, but no, not any longer. You know what? Yeah, I've just, seen you I in read, that condition. I read a book <laughs> that that said uh, a drink. The title was Drinking. A romance. It's a romance. And mm -hmm. the woman who wrote it said uh, that there was this famous person who said, uh, one drink, I'm under control. Uh, two drinks, I'm under the table. Three drinks, I'm under my host. You know, it's like <laughs> wow. the, the, the progression of like, yeah, that's really right. what happened. You know, it's like you have a drink or two and you're talking and then next thing you know, you're like, you know, you're uh, like, uh, flirting. And, yeah. Uh, you know. yeah, before you know it and it goes, yeah, wow. Yeah. yeah. I know I did. That, that's when the reptile yeah. comes out. Yeah, <laughs> I guess so. You know, well, from my, her, with my first wife, we had a, I had a jukebox in, in the den that we had in our house. And right. Doug Stegmaier, who was the bass player of my bass Bob player, Dan, yes. He yeah. got me he got me a neon sign to hang in there. It was called <sighs> and, and it said the reptile room because you walked in. <laughs> I gotta get one. You walked in and you crawled out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Oh man. Awesome. Hell yeah. Well, so Julie, let's we got a, um, let's, open a, let's open a bar and call it the reptile room. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that may be a good idea. That's perfect. I You're a genius. It. We'll get Johnny Depp to come down. He's done part of the Viper Room, man. Well, you know. There you go. <laughs> he needs a place in New York to go and hang out late at night and you know and play. He needs a place to play, play too. And hang out and 
do all the cool stuff that he does. <laughs> I thought my divorce divorces were bad, man. First oh, yeah. one went like a charm. Second one was like the War of the Roses. And, yeah. And now I've just I've thrown in the hat. I'm I'm comfortable. I'm somewhat tamed. And uh, I feel good. I got the right lady in my life, you know. Yeah, mine costs always... a lot of money. Mine were a lot, very expensive. Yeah, I, yes. I'm still waiting on my first one yet. Got to get that yeah. done. I'm going to tell you, Julie. I need you. To, I, I'm going to get you my lawyer here in New York. I wish he practiced out there, man. He'd tear him up. Yeah, well, that's a nerd. Well, well listen, we we got to take a quick break, and uh, let's carry this on. And we're just getting started. All right. All right. Let's go Live with Eve, Liberty DeVito, and Julie, and we'll be right back. Right. See you soon. All right. Hi, I'm Gabrielle Metz, and I'm on Live with Neve. Live with Neve. Great sound effects, great people, and great guests. And who is this? This crazy guy. I swear to God, man, I feel like we've known each other for a decade, and we just right. go out and get into all kinds of trouble. But it's funny, now that we're sober, I don't know, I, I just love to eat. <laughs> it's, it's back to the food again. <laughs> Here I am, man. I don't know. You bring up the on in me. Three you know, Italians it's, talking. It's so it's so great. You know, I want to go to lunch with you, and I want to date Julie. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, come on, man. Come on, let's hey, go. Let's go. She's going to be up party. here. We're shooting some shows in the next month, and she'll be up here. So we're gonna we're gonna reach out and hook <laughs> yeah, you up. Yeah, yeah. Let's hook up together. Well, and let's know, all go out. I, I play in Tampa a lot. Uh, oh, you with, do? Come with my give... band, the, the Lords of Fifty Second Street. Uh, okay. It's myself, Richie Canada, and and Russell Jabbers from. The Did, didn't Olympics. you play at the uh, Children's Olympics, Special Olympics here in um, Newark about three years ago, four years no. ago? No. no. Okay. <laughs> I, Wait a minute. I thought Wait because, a minute. Because um, the horn player did. Richie. Yeah, Richie yeah, played Richie it. Did. No, we played at Ruth Eckerd, and we played downtown. Oh, we played downtown in Tampa. There's a theater there. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. The, Over at the Channel Side, Tampa Theater. Side, theater? Tampa it's a little theater on the corner. Um, Tamp Tampa Theater? Is that what it's called? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, maybe. It's a great right venue. outside sometimes in the, sh in the street. They have this big street festival. They close down the streets. Yeah, is it on Channel Side? Oh, oh, wait. Ch it's not Gasparilla, is it? No. Gasparilla. No. I used to go to Little Gasparilla. Oh, oh, oh okay. So you, oh, okay. Now there. hang okay. out there. Oh, my God. You talk about getting... There's yeah. nothing like playing on the float the gas oh. in the 90s. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, I brought some memories back, huh? Sorry oh, about that. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, they tell God. me I had fun when we were playing the float riding through town. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of remember getting on, but that's sketchy. It's sketchy. <laughs> All I know is they tell me I played good, so... For oh, everyone yeah. who doesn't know what Gasparilla is, it is the single most amazing and uh, crazy event in Tampa, aside from uh, Guavoine. I was going to say, <laughs> they ruined Guavoine when they when they took all the sex and nudity out of it. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Guavoine oh, and, 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 and Gasparilla. Yeah, yes. the Guavoine night parade is no matter where you've been. I don't care if you've done the running of the bulls at Pompalona. You have seen some shit at the night parade you'll never see anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've seen a lot of things. You know, in our business, we see things. And sometimes they scar you for life. Yeah. And sometimes you just go, wow, I'm glad that wasn't me. But that was some crazy <laughs> shit. <laughs> you start I learning who to stay away from <laughs> I, have yeah. a, I have a friend on there I, we do this thing called the sessions sometimes and it's run by this woman jules her name is jules oh. and she lives in tampa and uh we go around to every uh, school uh colleges and stuff like that myself uh other musicians uh, people that are uh, uh music lawyers uh agents Excellent. and talk about 
what it's like to be in the music business. You don't necessarily have to be the musician that goes on stage. There's roadies, Absolutely. there's tour managers, there's so much right. to do to be in that arena of music, you know? That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's cool. And uh, she, the one who heads it, as a matter of fact, she put together a book called, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, I forget what it's called, Sessions or something. But it's uh, got 550 drummers in it. It's a coffee table book. She's a oh, photographer wow. and she took oh. pictures because it's really difficult to take a picture of a drummer because he's got all this right. shit in front of him, mm -hmm. you know, or he's sure. up high. So she mm -hmm. went around around the world and took photos in their houses and you know, and there's a right. the picture of the drummer and um and there's biography. Uh -huh. five hundred and fifty. Wow. wow. Insane. Wow. Sticks and skins. Sticks and skins. That's the name of the book. Sticks yeah. and skins. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I can't wait. Uh, I'm really looking forward to reading your book. Um, I'm going to definitely get that this week and uh, dive See, into it. See, we, things wouldn't be that funny if you read it already. <laughs> well, you know, tell there's me about a lot of it. would be like it would be like tell me about how your father used to beat you and shit like that. Yeah. <laughs> I know we we could sit and like talk about like the dumbest stuff. It would bore the yeah, shit yeah, out of everybody. Yeah, let's start to bum out, man. Let's, let's really. Bum We're out. hacking it up here, man. Yeah. I just got my first COVID shot yesterday. You got Did, both of them. I just got the first one yesterday. I'm hoping to. Uh, you know, get the next yeah. one. I guess the month from yesterday. I got both of mine. Did uh, did you find the second one worse? Oh well, it hurt. My arm hurt actually. Yeah, my arm hurts, but you know, compared to having surgery in the past six, two weeks yeah. ago, three weeks ago, it's like you should be able to get in the ring with Mike Tyson. <laughs> oh no, no! Right. Oh, I'll fucking fuck him up. I'll bite his ear off. I'll just grab yeah. his femur and start gnawing on his leg before he kills me. <laughs> No, you just have to do this. I, like even the even a chihuahua can be daunt, you know, daunting if it's the wrong day and time of the month for that creature. You know, it's the size of the fight and the dog, not the dog's size. Julie, did you get your shots? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Are you going to get your shots, Julie? Um, yeah. I'm undecided right now. What do you mean? It's a, well, different You're reasons. Smoking that shit. Might as well get the That's shots. right. Well, yeah, and yeah, it's supposed to actually uh, prevent it. Um, but yeah, well, to be to be honest, um, I have fibromyalgia, and you, we, I learned um, that that is partially caused by uh, additives and uh, uh, preservatives, which took at least two generations for us to find out that they will kill you if you eat them. And so when you look at history and go through that, that's kind of where my thinking is and my logic is at the moment. But I, I do totally understand the need for it and, and why people get them. And I think anybody who feels the need to get them, you definitely need to get it. Definitely. And um, so I guess right now where I am is, you know, I, I need to find out where my comfort level is and what I need to do to make right. sure I feel safe and that the people around me are safe too and everything like that, you know? Yeah. Well, Julie, I, we're going to, I'm going to drag you through parts of New York city. You're going to have to get your shots. We're going to swim the Gowanus canal. They, oh. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> you know what's called, funny? I know what's in there. The, the Gowanus is, it, it's so bad. And there's a whole foods that sits right on the Gowanus. Oh. <laughs> no, there's not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, oh, it's oh, yeah. Even with they, 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 they keep joking that they've cleaned it up, and I'm uh, like, ah, man, you ain't cleaning that up. That, that's like, just you know, there's no mi mitigating that shit. There yeah. are all these years and decades and centuries of silt and drugs and filth and whatever God knows how many mobs, bodies mobs down there. Bodies coming up every now and then. I mean, I don't know. Oh, it's New York. It's just cool. part of the. If you're a yeah. true New Yorker, you see a stiff in the street and you just walk by and go, ah. The yeah, cops, yeah. they walk by. They don't care either anymore. Yeah, yeah. that's you know, a fourth one today. <laughs> well, you know, you see, you see somebody sleeping on the church steps and, uh, and uh, you say, there's a, a bum. I mean, he looks like he's in bad shape and, and they won't come. But if you say, I think he's dead, they'll come. Right. You have to yeah. say, I think Are he's you really? Dead. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My wife, we, we, when I lived there, we had a house in another part of Brooklyn and there was a truck that kept parking in front of, 
um, our, our house. Somebody on the block uh, sold chickens, oh. you know, so that it stunk. And my wife kept calling and, and, and saying, like, it just stinks. The guy's got to move the truck. He's got to move the trunk. And then one day she said, it smells like somebody died in there. And they said, wait a minute, what? that takes on a whole new thing now when you, if you think somebody what? died in there. Then they'll come. You know? Are you serious? Did they I find a dead body in there? Smell no, no. They were the dead chickens that they were smelling. Oh. But if you say it, smell, it smells like somebody died in there, yeah. uh, they have to come now. Oh my God! It, right. that, that just they'll get to it at least. Yeah, you know, they have a speedy response time. They'll get there by next week. You know? Yeah, yeah. I always say like, I never want to get a heart attack in New York. Forget about no. it. The ambulance will never make it to the hospital. The no. idiocracy level just went up or down. I'm not sure which way it's it's supposed to be going, but it just went in one direction or another. <laughs> the idiocracy level. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> it's you're insane. dead. It's insane now. You know, uh, when they were doing all the Black Lives Matter uh, protests and everything like that, it was right. happening right outside my window. Right wow. outside. The, the, the protesters were coming down the block this way, and the cops were coming this way, and they met head on. Hmm. Luckily, it was peaceful. The chief of police in the white shirt came out and said, look, I, you got two choices. You could stay. I'll arrest you. You'll spend the night in jail. Or you can go home peacefully. The protesters turned around and went home peacefully. It was great. But when, when it was starting to build, it was it, I could look him right out the window, right down. Wow. It was intense. Wow. Yeah, it's very unnerving. Yeah. I know the past year I've been in like right after the you know, it really started getting weird in the city. And like there was a bunch of guys riding those four wheelers down Fifth Avenue. And I was like, what the fuck? And of course, you know, the, the mayor and the police can't stand each other. So the, the cops were just like, they start walking the other direction. Right. You know, again, what are they going to do with a whistle? They're going to chase them down and shoot them? Well, you know, when Bloomberg was, was uh, mayor of the city, <laughs> he uh, used to tell all these guys, these gangs with these dirt bikes, with no right. plates, nothing, ride down the street. They're, they're like terrorizing people. Yeah, that's when Bloomberg When Bloomberg was mayor... He used to stop them, take the bikes away, and push them into the East River to make landfill. This mayor now, they don't do anything. The cops won't even stop them. Nothing. No. No, I know. That's what I, I noticed that day. The cops were just like, what do you want me to do about it? I ain't got yeah. a car. I, I'll blow my whistle at him. Yeah, right. And, you know, they know if they if they accidentally shoot somebody, God forbid, that's not going to end up well. So oh, they're no. just like... I think the Florida option for a lot of the New York cops and, you know, you've lived in the city long enough to know, man, you know, there's good and bad in every organization. I, oh, I know yeah. some oh, excellent yeah. people who've been on the, on the job forever. And, uh, you know, they work hard. I see a message from Julie is that we're, we're almost at the time to have another commercial. Woo, woo. So Lynn, we're going to carry on in just two minutes. Uh, so much and, for I, the I, private I, chat. <laughs> <laughs> the private chat. I like that. Private I saw chat. it, and I just when I saw it pop up, I looked at the time, and I knew you were so efficient that there you were looking out for old Uncle Neil. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. You're on live with me, with Liberty Devito. We're know talking what music and fun. Here we go. <laughs> oh God, I don't know. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Neve from Live with Neve. We're just having a little fun driver here, so please PayPal me forward slash at Live with Neve. Here we are at the base of the old bridge. It was washed out in 1990, forcing them to build a brand new bridge. We were very close to the spot where Bill Skeeto was hung back in December 3rd, 1864. We will go explore that spot shortly. We just wanted to show you the base of the bridge that forced them to cover up the hole with tons and tons of cement and rock.
Ah, so I couldn't see you. <laughs> what uh, was that about? Somebody got hung, was hung, and then a bridge. And what was that commercial? Yeah, that, that was for a paranormal uh, investigations company out of uh, Alabama. Oh. And they uh, go out and find ghosts and haunts and haints and my old girlfriends. And, uh, yes, and they that show was how a, horrible life could be. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and that was a, that was a specific story at a specific <clears throat> haunt that they had, had investigated. So they were uh, sharing the the story about the haunt. I think wow. it was just one of my relatives who got lost on the way to Georgia and <laughs> ended up in the wrong place at the wrong time. I don't know. <laughs> what can I say? I, we, a big hand up for John Spear. I, I'm glad to hear you're doing yeah. better, man. Stop with the commercials. Hell, I'm getting billions of dollars, Liz. I mean, God, <laughs> yeah. a man's got to make a living. Yeah, you know, arms for the poor. Out of this? Arms for the poor. <laughs> yeah. Please. Give to the, the Broken Arm Drummers Relief Fund. <laughs> no, there we go. Oh, for the love of God. Here we go. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it could get real weird. I'm not going to go there. It just could get into realms uh, I'm best avoiding. I don't know what's with this hat, man. It's lame. It's, lame. it's, lame. it's really lame. It it's is lame. lame. You know, my, my New York, I couldn't find my fucking Yankees hat, which is what now is driving me out of my mind. What does it say on it, on your hat? Yeah. It says it's the hundred and... It's like a lame color. Some, it actually is a really, it's an old painting cap. <laughs> Let's see if my hair is maniacal enough. Ah! Oh, you got there hair go. up there. I don't, I, don't ha I don't have hair, so I, I wear a hat, you know. What the hell, man? I, I have hair, but I wear a hat to cover it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at that awkward in-between stage. I decided just to let it grow out. I don't know why. I haven't had long hair in decades, but... <laughs> You know, I used, like, have my hair, I used to have the hair, my hair past my shoulders in the 60s. Hey, you know, hey, right. Man, right. you know, I was doing it. But now if I had yeah. hair, I say, I would say I would change it every week. I would change the color of it. I would change it. Cut Hell it yeah. Let it grow right. long. Damn it. I miss it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but no. I, tell, I, I tell my daughters, I say, you got my hair. You guys took my hair. You oh, beautiful oh, hair, my girls. That's nice. That's cool, man. So they live in the city too? No. Um, one of my daughters lives in um, uh, outside of Philadelphia. She's a, a registered nurse, works in a hospital in uh, Doylestown, Pennsylvania. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, my other one is an actress. Uh, she is in Chicago. She's on a show. As a matter of fact, tonight is the first night I'm missing it because I'm doing <gasps> this with you. Oh, we're sorry. It's called Chicago Med. It's called Chicago Med. It's on NBC. Uh, she's oh, one of the man. stars, and she lives in Chicago. And um, my other one lives uh, in Santa Barbara. She's the one that just had the baby and made me the grandmother. All right. Oh, she, congratulations! She, uh, she met her husband. Uh, they were touring together with Fleetwood Mac. She, my daughter, was doing the uh, dressing rooms and stuff like that. That's actually how I met my second wife. She wow! Was, huh. she, I played with with Stevie Nicks for six months, and she was Stevie's best friend. And, uh, uh -huh. Yeah. That's cool. Small world. Small yeah. world. It's, it's oh, what's that for? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what that's about. I think I know. <laughs> really? <laughs> you know, I, I asked a lawyer once when I got my first divorce, I said, did any of these couples ever, you know, stay together and talk? He said, 99.9% .9 of them don't. Don't right. ever talk again after a wow. divorce. Wow. Hey, that's too bad. I, I'm lucky. I, I talked to my first wife and everything's great. We have two beautiful daughters together. Second, well, you know, that's another story. She's my favorite mistake. And I can just say there's a lot of zeros. She's done okay marrying me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> better yeah. getting divorced. Right. And, but, you know, I, didn't get anything. I, son. I got a kid who's 18 this year. I'm getting a pay raise with that 18 year birthday. And, you know, life goes on. You know, I paid, to get, I paid to get laid before, but man, that, that was a big nut. Man, I'm telling you what, I'll just be finishing paying for it like in December. So I'm planning a trip to Europe because I'm like, you know. Dude, oh. I've been doing this all wrong because I got zero. No. 
Julie, no. all you got to do is just zero. don't worry I'm doing this all wrong. Wrong. send a couple of buddies over there. They'll talk to your husband. You'll have your get in no time. You know, Florida, you don't have any kids, do you, Julie? No. No children. No. Okay. No, no, well, I'm lifelong like everybody else here. <laughs> how long were you married? Um, six years, but uh, lived with, we were together for 10. So, so, yeah, lived with him for four years to ensure this exact situation didn't happen and vetted him to everyone in his hometown. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know why people are so happy about people getting married. They're going to get divorced anyway. <laughs> what you yeah, doing? I don't even, I'm done. <laughs> That was one time. It when I when I the first time I got married, we were in the studio with Billy Joel. You know, I think we were recording uh, um, 52nd Street. And uh, I told Phil Great Ramone, stuff. I said, Phil, will you come to my wedding? And Phil Ramone said, Lib, I'll come to all your weddings. Oh, <laughs> oh that was funny as shit. And you were like, Great guy. Great guy. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sometimes you know you need your friends to keep you kind of honest. <laughs> yeah, That's funny. Yeah, you know. Sometimes I think I should have listened to my friends. <laughs> Julie damn sure knows what I'm talking about. You know, I I talk about it my, I talk about it in my it's book. Okay. How my well, my first wife? I was a terrible husband. Terrible. You know, I mean, we were at our peak. Come on, just the way you are. Was the Stranger album was huge. Fifty Second Street was bigger. The glass houses was huge. Oh, I'm going to sit around at the hotel at night and not do anything. What are you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. <Yeah. laughs> People were throwing, they're throwing themselves at us, you know. Right. See, this is well, the life I want. <laughs> tell me, tell me this. Do you, uh, do you and Billy, do you ever chat and just hang out still? Or is that business kind of. Billy wrote the Ford to my book. Yay. Excellent. Excellent. I can't wait to yeah, I can't wait to get it. I it's really on can't wait to read your book. Audio. That's gonna be exceptional. I know it's gonna be full of great stuff. Well, we we uh we you know we had a falling out for 15 years, we didn't talk, you know. Uh and uh it, it it's hard because uh you know when you break up with somebody and if if you still love them but you talk bad about them because they hurt you so much, and right. um you know, but deep down inside you know that like oh, why did I say that? I still love the person, but I, I've got this angry facade that i'm putting on you know right that's the way it was when i talked about billy in interviews i would really like think like why did i say that we made this beautiful music together i mean oh, you know yeah. 30 years i played with him every yeah. all the albums all the live shows and all that kind of stuff right and uh so uh, uh you know when i had my knee done and i was laying in bed dying the end of liberty devito I, I said, I, I wrote to him and I said, you know, the piano drum feud has got to stop, uh, uh -huh. you know, and he said, he wrote back immediately and said, you know, I was disappointed at the way we ended. And uh, I met him for dinner, you know, for, for a meal. And when I got down to Florida, we were playing in, uh, in uh, South Florida by Fort, uh, Fort Lauderdale and Billy uh, Winters down there. And uh, I met him for breakfast, actually. And we just talked and it was like, we were standing on a bridge and all those troubled waters were going under that bridge. You know, we didn't even mention anything that was bad. We talked about friends in past, friends who are sick, you know, our children now, because he has two young children. I have one young child and mm -hmm. uh, it was great. And he writes in my book that, that we have reconciled and, and he's a better person for it now Aww, because we did, cool. you know, so, you know, it's just great having my friend back, you know. Yeah, I bet. I'm so happy it for you. If I, if I never play with him again, it was just all that love and all that that energy we put into that music and all the people that loved it, you know. Absolutely. I so, never saw you guys love it. And ever was disappointed. Y'all were always rehearsed well and just gave a fucking monster show. I, I've seen yeah. you two or three times and just always enjoyed it, you know. Yeah, when 52nd just, Street came out, I was kind of going through a jazz phase where I was just like all yeah. about jazz and nothing else. All the rock I'd learned growing up, like you and, uh, you know, John Bonham and any number of great drummers, Billy Cobham. There's so many great players in different styles. I love them all. But um, I don't know. I'm losing my strength of thought. <laughs> it's that late night thing. Oh, it's almost nine o'clock. I got to get ready for bed. Take my Metamucil. <laughs> But um, what's the matter? Can't get shipped out of port or what? Thank That's you, it, man. It's getting a little tough. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Liberty. Uh, Thank I got you. Ship out of port. I like that. That's good. <laughs> Thank <man>. you, Liberty. <laughs> uh, so um, you know, 
I feel like we could probably talk for another two hours and, and still have fun. Um, you're yeah. great, great fun yakking with you. Let really me tell is. you something. We talk for another two hours. It's going to be my third divorce. <laughs> yeah, I, no, no, I, I get it, buddy. I get it. No, we don't want that. We don't want that. No, definitely no, don't want no. any trouble in House of Liberty. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time, for sharing all of your stories, every all of your beautiful energy and everything that you your experiences. Thank you so much. Well, I had a guess. I mean, this was great. You know, well, a lot of fun. You know, I, I'd like to have you back sometime because we just sort of scratched no, the uh, no, no tip. way. No way. No way. He sounds like Leland Sklar. I was just going to say the same thing. Yeah, Leland. Leland, the first time I worked with him, he, he, he says to me, I said, hey, I need you to do some promo for me. He just goes, he goes no. No. And, and the best part was and I kind of was... tried to back up. It kind of hit me a little. Then he started cracking up, and I felt like, oh, this is going to be a fucking great interview because this guy's fun. His timing's good. We're going to yuck it up, you know? It was Perfect, because Neil was, you could see the cogs turning and kind of getting stuck there thinking, oh, no, did I just insult Neil and to this? And, and, I'm, and I'm like trying not to laugh because I'm like, he's fucking with him. He's fucking with him. He's fucking with him. And then Leland just burst out. When that shit happens, man, you don't know. I write my book. You know, I played with Mitch Ryder. I don't know if you know who Mitch Ryder Oh, is. yeah, I know who Mitch Ryder when is. When I was 18 years old, I played with Mitch. And that was the first gig that actually gave me the key to open the door. You know, sure. when I told somebody I played with Mitch Ryder, I was in, in immediately. Absolutely. But um, I, in the book, and I'll, I'll give this away, I didn't meet Mitch. And uh, the first time I saw him was when he walked on stage uh, and we did the show. And um, uh, so after the show, I'm all excited. And, 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 you know, I can't wait. I'm 18 years old. I'm sitting on the bus. My hair is down on my shoulders. I'm wearing this. <laughs> This uh, Nehru shirt, it's Paisley, <laughs> and they got my bell bottoms on. I'm feeling really good Eleganza, man. Got to get the Eleganza groove. Yeah. So <laughs> Mitch walks on the bus, and he walks right past me, doesn't say anything. And then uh, a couple of minutes later, he comes up to me, and he sits right next to me. And he looks at me, and he says, now, I'm 18. Now, he's a Detroit hitter, right? I'm 18 right. years old. And he, said, he looks at me, and he goes, did you have fun? I said, yeah. He goes, did you like what you were doing? I said, yes. He goes, would you like to do this for the rest of your life? I said, yes. He said, blow me. And he got up and oh, went back in a box. Shut the hell up. No way. <laughs> Dude, that's so oh, not. Man. Did you laugh that or did you like freak out? Head, man. No, no, I blew him and kept going on the tour. <laughs> 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 no, because the other bandmates did like what you did. You, they, they started giggling, you know, and they knew it. Was <laughs> Dude, that's so Man, oh that's totally God, that's fucked great. up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do that to so, somebody that, now. <laughs> that was my first experience of like, oh, God, this is what it's going to be like. It's going to be hard. You're gonna, Dude, right? Yeah, I think when you first learn no to point. pay your dues. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. 18 That's, years old, just out of high school. <laughs> I bet. And Mitch was a big deal back then. Oh, it yeah. really was. Yeah. This Those shows 19, were incredible. 19, I mean, 1968, this was. Yeah. Amazing. So, how old wow. are you, man? I'm 70. No, you're, you're not. No, you're not. No, 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 no. You're amazing. You know, us drummers, man, we just got it going on. We got that, I don't know, it's the Yeti gene or something i don't know what it is but. Yeah, well because you guys are in pristine health all the time you have yeah. to be to do your job you have to be yes yes and yes. i write that in my book too i would never be able to do what i'm doing now if i was still drinking if i wasn't sober Absolutely. i would never be able to do it and you know, it, you I know. Agree. I, there's nothing i can do better drunk and there's no doubt right you right. know i just there's nothing I mean, every even my relationships with people that I just have as acquaintances is better. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. you just have. <laughs> it's a lot easier to be nice when you're sober. And I'm not a particularly ugly drunk. I'm just ugly and stupid and like fall down. But I'm I'm a friendly, happy drunk. You know. I, yeah. It's just tell, you know that. Tell Susan I'm in Clinton Hill. Clinton. Oh, Hill. there you go, Clinton yeah. Hill, Susan. Susan's one of our, our favorite fans. Uh, she yeah. actually, if I had, was in the studio, I'd have the backdrop of the, I think it's the Queensboro Bridge. Oh, yeah. And it looks, <laughs> you know, it looks great. And uh, Susan's great. She's uh, she's a lot of fun. 
she harasses us. She's one of our earliest fans, and now she pops by, and we we love her. She's just great. That's cool. And now That's for cool. everybody else watching, we're here chatting with Liberty and having a damn good time. I've uh, I got to just say, I, I want to have you back in, a, in another quarter or something because I I kind of now that I've I want to read your book and have you back. That way, yeah. I can kind of so flesh could, it out. So we could, and, the, um, we could do the depressing show. The, the depressing <laughs> show. Oh yeah, we can do. We have just the most miserable. Thing to yeah, yeah, yeah. don't let your son or daughter be, get into the sli- lurid underbelly yeah. of rock Why and we, roll. You know, I did. You know, I, I don't say it in the book, but I did find out how to be a successful drummer in a rock band. You have to <laughs> marry a woman that has a job. <laughs> <laughs> is that a new? Is that a new drummer joke? <laughs> well, it's, it's sort of like. I, you can use it, Julie. It's yours. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it, 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 yeah, I'm trying to think. If there's another joke. Yeah, I know. I, I you know, because you know, as a bass, I, Neil, I, I we're we're your bass singers today. I didn't get any. And Neil, uh-huh. Neil, Neil has to drop uh, at least one or two zit bass uh, jokes on me all the Just- time. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm no, taking it no. easy on you today, love. I mean, you know, oh, really, thanks. every bassist Appreciate needs a break from relentless bass jokes. I just saw somebody, okay. Clinton Hill. Who was that? Oh, that was me responding. Yeah. Oh, Clinton oh, Hill. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. And then Susan's asking me where my cat is. Um, ah! my, cat, my cats, plural, are in the room with their mom, relaxing and wondering where the hell I am. They're like... What's he doing out there? All right. And then the other cat goes, fuck him. I can sleep on his pillow now. Let him sleep on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I love my cats. I love them so much that I broke my arm trying to grab a bowl of water for him. God. <laughs> I, I wanted to come up with some story like this scars from an alligator or a crocodile attack in Zambezi or somewhere. There you go. That would have been you know, it's a, quite the ugly scar and all that. But yeah, yeah. I don't know. It sounds better than... Yeah, you know, like I was going to get cat food and water, and I fell over a box. <laughs> Sober. <laughs> How do you do that? You know, and nothing before. like the truth. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. All right, I'm going. Well, all right, man. <laughs> hey, thanks for having you on. Give your uh, give your lovely wife a hug and embrace from right. us. Hug, 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 hug. Tell her hug, we'll hug, have hug, you guys hug, on hug, next. Julie, to- hug, Julie. Hug. All right, we'll talk to you soon. There you go, man. Thank you. Hey, love, right, you guys. thanks. Have a great night. We'll okay. see you soon. Bye. Bye.